shake your booties for black girl nerds. How are you, baby? Good? I'm excellent. How are you doing? I can't complain. You know, we're healthy. And uh, we just got picked up for season two. So that's the beautiful news. I'm so glad because I was going to get into that. Because I've seen the whole season already. <laughs> oh, you saw the whole thing? Okay. I've seen beautiful. the I, I binged it. It didn't even take me long. I binged it in like two days. I watched the whole thing. Oh, my God. That's awesome. So I have to make sure I curtail my questioning so that I'm not giving it away to people who are seeing it episodic. Who didn't get the well, benefit? Yeah. Like so it's funny because I, they said, you know, this interview is going to come out on Monday. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about Sunday's episode. I'm going, okay, what episode is it? six? But what happened? So I had to go and see some of it because, you know, it's all a blur. I, I, we shot this a year ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's such a good show. I mean, I'm, I'm, but just blessed to be in something like this. Um, I was very lucky to be in a show many years ago called Prison Break, mm -hmm. which basically to me was one of the shows that changed the face of TV, you know, along with 24. Yes. The way TV is watched today is because of shows like 24 and Prison Break and Lost. Yeah. You know, if you remember back then, it was only episodics and you would watch, it was procedural. You would watch episode one or you could watch episode 20 and you didn't miss much, you know, you know, like, okay. And then series shows like this came around and just kind of opened up the gates to what we're watching nowadays. And uh, I felt very, you know, proud to be on a groundbreaking show. And what are the chances of catching a, a lightning twice? And when this came around, and the joke is that I'm in prison again, <laughs> um, <laughs> I always say, well, it's got to be the face. Um, but you know what? No, it's just, it's a different role. It's, I mean, Rebecca Cutter did an amazing job touching, um, subjects that are very much real nowadays. And we don't talk about them, you know, we don't talk about these things, mm -hmm. um, you know, drug addiction and, um, not, not just the drugs that we're used to, you know, the cocaine and, you know, and this is our, these are prescription drugs that it can happen to you, God forbid, it can happen to, well, it, I mean, I don't want to say it happened to my brother, but my brother, you know, I come from a family of doctors. My dad is a doctor, my mom is a doctor, my brother's a doctor. My degree is in biology. I was supposed to be a doctor too. I just took a left yeah. turn somewhere. Um, but my brother had surgeries in his knees, you know, this was maybe, 15 years ago and I didn't realize, you know, when I, when I was doing research for this show, I realized what opiate was. And again, this is not a show about opiate, but I wanted to do the research about, you know, learn about this, the backdrop of this. And I remember my brother, you know, because it can happen to anyone, you know, your wisdom's out and you need, they'd give you this type of medicine and they give you, you know, if you're getting your knees reconstructed or whatever. So I remember calling my brother, I go, bro, did you ever, take any of these Percocets and whatever, and all these Oxycontin, and he goes, I did. And I go, did you get hooked? And he goes, I did. Wow. He goes, I said, I, it, it, in two weeks, I realized I was hooked, and I literally took the whole uh, you know, bottle and dumped it and went clean. I said, nope, I'm not doing this, because you literally, it grabs you, and it won't let you go. And it's, I saw a documentary that it just broke my heart in which basically, you know, families, you know, just normal families, you know, the kids are playing football. The, another family, the, the, the girls were getting their wisdom teeth taken out and they got hooked on these. And I mean, I'm mean, giving you the ending, but they died. The, the kid died, he couldn't get over it. She, she kept overdosing and then the, the girl at the same way. I mean, it's just, it's just and they, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be addressed. Absolutely. That was something that I particularly appreciated about the show as a person from the inner city and just seeing historically crime shows that have uh, drug use and drug sales and transactions as kind of the center or the crux of their storyline. This is very different from anything that we've seen before and the fact that it is in a Cape town, like a little sleepy town and not just some midway point along Interstate 10, like mm. between Texas and Louisiana or something. It's yeah. way up in the, in the Northeast. 
um, a semi-affluent town. It's not really a poverty-stricken town. And the people who are consuming it are not what you typically expect to consume. Mm -hmm. And more stories are being shined on that with the opioid addiction and how it's really, really affecting these outlying, it's not a big city problem. For your character specifically, as he is in jail, he's still the kingpin, even in this small town of running what happens there, but he's conflicted in that he has love for his son and he has these other things to him that gratefully we'll learn about in season two, hopefully. Yeah. What's it like playing this type of character in the sense that does he really have any redeeming qualities because there's such a harshness and just kind of like a, like a gutterness to him and how he interacts, except when it comes to his son. Um, it's a great question. And here's the thing, what I, what I loved about when I read the script, these are all flawed characters. They're all, then that's the beauty, but that's how we are. We all have our flaws. You know, we're like onions and, 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 and we get peeled and there's a light that's, that's one side that might be rotten and the other one is not. Um, I always said, nobody's born being bad. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the whole thing. And again, we can, we can get to that topic later, but the whole thing with racism right now, mm -hmm. you know, nobody's born a racist. Right. This is taught at home, you know. The same thing with, with Frankie, he was not born bad. There are circumstances that take you that, to that point. Um, he's a guy with, uh, I call him the puppeteer. He has got hands on everything, even though he's in prison. Mm -hmm. um, and his main goal, his main, he, he, his, his first thing is his empire. Um, clearly family, it's, it's up there as well. You know, and, and, and you can see how he, when he's with his kid and his baby mama, you know, he's different than when he's with his boys. Um, so again, that shows me there's redeeming factors to this guy. There's, there's somewhat of a heart inside. You just have to deep, go deep and find it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, he's, he's called the villain. I call him misunderstood. You know, right. everybody has a reason. Um, you know, the crooked cop, might be crooked, not, you know, I'm pretty sure he joined the force because he wanted to do good at, at the beginning. And then who knows what happened down the road? You know, maybe he had a daughter that needed more, uh, you know, medical attention and whatever he was making at the force was not enough. So he started taking a little bit of money here, a little bit, you know, money there, you know, and then became the crooked cop. In, in, in a way, we can go on and on and explain so many things. There are circumstances that there are obstacles. There are things that take, you know, it's what you're dealt in life and you deal with them and you somehow, you, you, you get to make choices, you know, uh, you don't make the right ones all the time. But so that's one of the things I love about Frankie and about, you know, the show, every character has a different nuance and, and we can't wait. I can't wait to see what we have in store for, for, for Frankie. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, we don't see much, in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, of him through the whole season. We see enough. But we hear about him through the whole episode. In every episode, you keep hearing Frankie and Frankie and Frankie. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because this episode that just happened, episode six, is the first time uh, Monica, uh, you know, you know, and, 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 and myself, we get to meet. She finally, Jackie, finally finds who is this guy behind the curtain? He's like the Wizard of Oz. Who's the guy who's been making all these things? And we, we see the first encounter and we, we I mean, for, for everyone that saw it, 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 it was a great, I mean, amazing. I mean, the only thing that I have with her in the whole first season, but it's just brilliant because she finally gets to confront. Uh, and, and we see that scene right before that, when she's at the, uh, uh, the beach and say, you know what? I don't want to be a coward. I got to confront this guy. I want to see what it is. And it's like the Wizard of Oz. She might have expected something even bigger or something. You know, you, we, we, we make our own movie in our heads and then she goes he's a punk he's this guy what do, what do you mean and uh again it's just brilliant writing uh, i've i've already i've seen like you i've seen the whole thing once and i've seen i've started watching it as it airs and you find so many other things as it goes you go oh my god it's, it's it grabs you by the neck and it's it's a roller coaster it doesn't let you go i it it kept me up 
you know, the binge watching really kept me up. It really kept me pondering your characters because there's so many from the outside looking in positive attributes to just even how you all are cast. The representation is crazy. Yeah. Uh, the ways that you're all able to interject elements of culture and, you know, identity identifying factors not just the stereotypical bad guy mm -hmm. so it was impressive to see all of you with you and uh jackie's character and having the two of you having that face off as latinos and I, I know. <laughs> layers of characters and and you have their own things but back to to frankie and his son that was the relationship that really stood out to me does frankie really love his son or is his son just a commodity adores his son he is there's a scene uh, i don't even remember i think it was episode three episode four four in which i wanted to hear him breathe you know and, and again you you might think how does a monster like this have any feelings for anybody and that you know he does he he loves his son and he cares about renee i mean he loves renee and, and, and this is one of the most difficult things that i had to deal with playing Frankie when he's you know the things he asks of her are just things that I wouldn't be able to like you know he's willing to put her out there and say I need you to go sleep with this guy I need you to go because I need you to be resourceful I need you to step up you know it's like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, between these two it's a camaraderie and they can't wait I mean you've seen the whole thing I don't I don't want to spoil it but um, you know, he loves her in a sick way. <laughs> he does love her, but he's willing to let her because in maybe in his mind, it's just body, it's just gone. But again, we saw in this episode how he was like, he wasn't dealing with the whole, hey, I want you to get close, but not close to my son. Right. I mean, one thing is my family, and one thing is you just sleeping with this guy to get me info. And, and, and you go, where, where is the fine line that is like, he's okay with that. So I had a lot of, I never struggled with, with that, dealing with that, you know, I talked to Rebecca, she goes, there are people that are like that, they're okay. And again, I'm not, uh, you know, what's the word? I'm not saying, I'm not uh, saying anything wrong about those people that are willing to sleep with each other and whatnot and listen to, you know, to each his own. I just feel like I'm the kind of person that, What's mine? And I don't want, not that you're a possession of mine, but it's like, we're, you're mine, I'm yours. You know, I don't want to share you with anybody. Right. That's just me. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Frankie sees it as, this is just, this is just, a transaction. I don't care. Yeah, it's a transaction. This is just, it's what's going to get, you know, what is it, a means to an end. Right. Uh, but when, but he, you know, he, when it comes to his family, you don't, you don't, you don't, and then you'll see that, uh, actually, you see it in the first episode. When the when Abruzzo comes in and talks about Renee, he goes, "Hey, don't talk about Renee. That's my you, that's my baby mama you're talking about." Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's the nuances that the, the lift you know it just grabs you and and, and it, it doesn't let you go and and that's what's intriguing about all these characters. Every single one of them have something that just turns you around and and, and it keeps you. It's like you're watching. It's like you're we're being peeping. We're peeping Tommy on real life. Mm -hmm. It stops you just short from completely hating them. Because usually there's a, a, a character in the show where you're just like, God, I can't wait till this person gets back. <laughs> somebody finally kills him and gets off of him. To your point earlier, which is an interesting point about Frankie, every character has an origin story. And what made them be the way they are, like Batman, like Superman, and what kind of made them who they are. If you could look into the crystal ball, you know, we know there's going to be a season two, but nothing has started yet for season two. But if you could predict kind of what Frankie's origin story, what do you think would lead him to, to that point? You know what? Um, again, we create our backstories. We, 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 we come up with, um, you know, that's the beautiful, beautiful things about that I love about acting. We get to play characters that will never, you know, I will never be Frankie. So we have the liberty to do these things and, and, and create our own magic kingdom unless we were kids and be pirates and be whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, Frankie to me was, you know, came uh, an immigrant, uh, you know, from the Dominican Republic. Um, and, you know, looking for a better life. 
Um, not the most educated. He's not the sharpest. He, I mean, he is sharp. Don't get me wrong. He's very sharp. He's not book smart. He is street smart. Right. And you are dealt whatever kind of cards you are, and you, you know, exploit that. Um, he knew that this was his, uh, the only way he could, you know, go further in life and got an opportunity. He, he you know, again, this is me creating my own um, uh, uh, world scenario, you know, moved to Boston. You know, there's a big community of, of Dominicans in, in Boston. Mm -hmm. And, you know, saw an opportunity to go to this little town, Cape Town and Provincefield. And, you know, they say, my mom always said, um, you know, you, I'd rather you are a, a, a big fish at a small pond than being a little fish in, a, in an ocean. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what Frankie saw. He saw an opportunity and um, he took it, um, you know, and, and created the end of the empire. Now, what specifically what was the turning point? You know, I don't want to say, you know, he, he came, you know, probably, you know, single mother, you know, moved with her kids to the, to the, the United States, um, you know, grew up on a, on a, on a, on a, on one of these dysfunctional families where probably dad was a drunk and beat the hell out of mom all the time. And, you know, she needed to escape with her and they had, I'm pretty sure I have a brother or sister, you know, we, we're not single kids anywhere. There's always uh, two or three or four of us, you know, I'm pretty sure I have many other brothers on my dad's side and on my mom's side I probably have a sister or a brother and um and again i'm just creating stuff here that uh going to your question you know there had to be a turning point where he got introduced into to this and for a reason to help either mom at home or to help his sister at school because she needed some you know he decided to and I want to see it that way because to me, it's more redeeming when you do it as of sacrifice to help someone in your family. Because to be Frankie, his family is, it's, it's, it's his core. Family is very important to him. I had a chance to uh, talk to Atkins uh, a week ago or about a week ago and uh, discuss some of those scenes that you all are doing together. They're some of the best scenes because they're so outside of who you are as people. He's just such a gentle, like a, a yeah. teddy bear, and he's just yeah, so yeah. and so very different in real life than he is with his character, as are he's, you. He's um, it's not lost on me that they put in the fact that he is, is Haitian, Haitian Dominican, Dominican. And, and Frankie is Dominican, given the history of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Wow. And, putting that nuance into the show, what did that surprise you? And how did you react when you first saw that? Let me tell you, God, you're amazing. You, you do your homework so well. Okay, so my parents are Dominicans. Mm -hmm. My mom is Dominican, my dad, both of them. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, which I consider myself Puerto Rican. I, I consider myself the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you always, people say, where are you from? Well, I mean, I'm from Puerto Rico, born and raised, but my heritage is Dominican. So I embrace it. I love both of them. Now, I know both history very well, and I know the history between, and again, not, I'm not going to cut a sore about it, but I know there's always been rivalry between Haiti and, and Dominican Republic. When going back to before the, the Trujillo's, uh, the dictator back in the day, you know, there was a slaughter of, of Haitians back, I mean, a massacre back in the day. I mean, I know this because of what I've heard from my parents down in you know, history. Right. So you know, there's that, you know, friction between them. Um, and and uh, when I had specifically that line, that to me, it, it was very, even though it's not me, it's a character. I always try to figure out, and again, I have no ch no say sometimes on, on these lines. You know, it's, it's what's written on the page. Right. And you can discuss it and whatnot, but also you don't want to, you don't want to water it down. I, and, and it was so brilliant what Rebecca, you know, wrote, in, I mean, in the writer on that specific episode, because they did her ho their homework in which I'm being Haitian, I'm being, being Dominican, I have control over you, you're, you're, you work for me, and there's that line when I said, you, you're Haitian, right? So what you're 
this is why you're stupid, you know, and I, I almost started cursing. I don't want to curse on your show, but you know, is that what you're stupid? You, know, you, you idiot. Mm -hmm. And I right away tried to, when I read that, I go, wow, are the Haitian audience going to see a Maori saying this or Frankie saying this, of course, you know, it, it was one of those things that I was a little bit concerned about it. Um, but then I realized, you know what? It's a show. It's an, you know, it, it's, it's, it's what's all make believe, even though we're touching topics that are very much real. I did a TV show a long time ago in which I got a lot of heat because of, it was a comedy show in which uh, I had to dress up as a girl. Uh, it was, you know, cross-dressing, whatever. And uh, there, was a there was a joke that a lot of Puerto Ricans were not happy with. And again, I didn't write the show. It was a funny joke. And again, it was comedy. Um, so we, we, we can't take ourselves so seriously sometimes. But the joke was basically... Um, it was about um, a, a guy is trying to sell uh, drugs. When I mean drugs, they're prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. um, was, my buddy was uh, found a job. We couldn't find a job, and we we had a, a deal. If you find a job, you get me in. If I if I find a job, I bring you in. So he finally found a job that it was a, as a pharmaceutical rep, um, but he never he didn't want to tell me that we had to dress up as girls. And that was the joke. I mean, but that was the, one of the things. And I, and I said, you got to bring me in. We made a pact. You know, you, you, you have to bring me in. Uh, you know, that we, we made a deal. And besides, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. I would be great at selling drugs. Prescription drugs, that was. But that joke didn't land with the Puerto Rican community. And I understood. Listen, it was an issue that I, you know, I, I felt so bad. And I, and I apologized on on my, you know, on what, on whatever I could, because again, at the end of the day, I had no say on what the writing was on on the page, um, and and I couldn't understand why there was so much anger, and you know, and I get it, people, you know, it's it, it's we, sometimes we got it. It's like walking on eggshells because we want to give, like you said earlier. We want to give. We we we, gotta, we want to break with stereotypes. Um, and here I am playing a Latino who is not the best stereotype out there. Now, am I not gonna do the, the job because I don't? I, I want to be perceived as I want to perceive be perceived as an actor. You know, this is not who I am. Uh, these are roles that I think they're. I try to stay shy from those roles, but when you find a writing like. How can you not? And again, one of the things about this show, you know, it, there's, there's a message that we're sending and we're shining a, slide, a, a spotlight on something that's uh, an issue. So if me playing the villain serves that purpose, then so be it. Right. You know, I don't need to be Superman all the time and the, and the cop and the lawyer. I'll get to play all those roles. As an actor, we get to play all these roles. You know, we, that's the beautiful thing. I get to put different hats. No, we're, I know we're supposed to be role models, but when I mean role models, it's in our private lives. And I, and I, I, I try to, you know, live a clean life um, and, and, and good, good things and, and always, you know, be an example. But when it comes to playing roles, there we get opportunities like these that sometimes either they are great or they fall. Like the, one, the, the previous one that I mentioned about the comedy. Um, it, it was a fail, you know, you get back up in the saddle and you go all over again. Um, and I don't know what was your original question. I know, I think I answered it, but we went on and on. I can talk to you forever. Oh, I can too. <laughs> but you know what, to, to your same point, Atkins had the same reaction as a Haitian. He said, that was right. you know, he doesn't, he, there is never any representation at all of any kind good, bad, or otherwise. And so to have this in, even interwoven into a network show to make people even question like, oh, I didn't know there were Dominicans there. Well, where are Dominicans? Why do they have so much friction with Haitians? Just to even really? kind of curate Raise that question. dialogue and create it to shine light on different people who haven't been represented before. Yeah. And so uh, listen, the, the inclusion that there is, and I mean, the first of the diversity of the cast, like you said, and also want to talk about the inclusion. Um, one of the things that I love, I've always said women 
she'll rule this world. Um, and I yes. always say this from the bottom. I mean, I, I'm sincere about it. There's no egos with women. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> There's, you guys just know how to do it right. This show is written, uh, created by a woman. Um, the first two episodes were directed by uh, Rachel Morrison, an amazing uh, director, cinematographer as well. Woman. Um, our lead character is a woman. Um, it's produced by a woman, Ellen Schwartz. I mean, it's just, it, would, it, it was one of the best environments I've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. you know, working environment that it was just, seriously, l- let women just rule the world, guys. Just enjoy the ride. We wouldn't have it. I mean, again, be, me being a, maybe a, a dreamer. <laughs> um, but I just think there's the, 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 uh, what's happening right now in Hollywood, you know, finally, they're waking up and realizing um, the, the power that women have and, and what you guys can bring um, a different different a different perspective on, on everything and it, it just shows I mean it you watch a show like this one and you realize how different it would have been if a, if a man would have directed it I mean created it and again not putting my people down you know my, my guys but I'm just saying that, it just felt, I felt proud to be part of something like this. Again, brought groundbreaking when it comes to giving women that opportunity that is so much deserved. I love what you're saying. Speak truth to power. I think you no. <laughs> and I agree with everything you say, 100%, speaking truth to power. So I'm going to pretend that I haven't seen the rest of the show. So following episode six, where we see Um, we finally get to see a lot of dialogue and a lot of things coming from Frankie and really getting to know that he's not just, you know, Oz behind the curtain, pulling the puppet strings. What can the fans look forward in the upcoming leading into the finale? Because the finale is something else. Yeah, I mean, it's here's the ending and I don't want to give this so much. I have to be careful with what I say because it's such an amazing finale. Um, and people might see it coming, might not. Um, but for a moment, I, you, you see that things, see, Jackie, it's a wrench that is thrown at, at Frankie. You know, he, he had everything planned. He's, he's like four or five steps ahead of Ray Abruzzo. He, everything is done for a reason. But Jackie came out of left field and it has disturbed the waters. Um, so we're going to see how he adapts, which is how one of the things I love about Frankie. He right away knows how to figure this out and adapt. And we'll see a turn of events between, and again, I think I'm able to say this, the turn of events between Ray Abruzzo, Rene, and myself. And there's a triangle right there that, I, I don't know if I can say much without spilling, you know, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I got to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but Frankie, Frankie takes the reins back and, um, and you'll see. But here's another thing that is fascinating and, and it's uh, oh, Osito. Osito is another one. He's, uh, he's that joker in the, in the card that you don't, he's like, we're playing, if we're, if we're playing poker, he's the river. And again, we'll see how in the next episode, he starts considering, listen, you know, Frankie's my boss, but I don't know if I want to, I want to work with this guy anymore, you know, or for this guy anymore. Um, You know, I'm doing his dirty work and what's going to happen. So um, I I can't wait. I can't wait. We got, is it this six? Yeah, of course. We got seven and eight, two more episodes. So. Well, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank so much. you. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.